and it's Maraval in Oran. I study French language second years. I like continued my studies in USA. I research a scholarship. Thanks. And it's Maraval in Oran. I study French language second years. I like continued my studies in USA. I research a scholarship. Thanks. If you sent this to a US university, what would they do? They respond? No. no. Yeah. What did they do wrong? A lot, I think. Yeah, pretty much everything. <laughs> so, what should you include? Identify yourself. Right off the bat. What's your name? I don't know who you are. I can't help you. They did do that. They did put their name in there. I blacked it out. Clearly state what you're interested in. I'm interested in this degree program. Yeah. I'm interested in this research area. Sell yourself briefly. Why are you a good candidate? I'm an Algerian student that got top marks. You know, or I'm um, interested in bringing back your research to my, to my home country to advance my academic career. Or I want to help open up Algeria's economy using business skills that I'll learn. What's the one or two sentences that make you the best candidate? Ask for more information. Okay? Just scholarships. Most universities have a general flyer or a general program guide that they can directly send you. Um, clarify so you got any extra uh, information. This is uh, oftentimes as an international student, there may be something that doesn't match up exactly. Um, Tests are a good example. Has anybody in here ever taken an IELTS test? No? Most universities take IELTS. Some don't. They'll only list the TOEFL. So you may want to reach out to them and say, hey, I have an IELTS score of a 7.5. Would you be willing to accept this instead of a TOEFL? And lots of times they'll say, yeah, 7.5 is, is really good on an IELTS. Um, we'd be willing to take that score in lieu of a TOEFL. Um, scholarship. Work opportunities. Remember, um, as, a, as a student on an F student visa, you're allowed to work up to 20 hours a week, but it must be on a university campus. So you may want to, if you're worried about supporting your living expenses, um, once you're there, in terms of your food and your housing, you may want to ask them, do you have work opportunities available on your campus for international students? Um, if you're more advanced in terms of your studies, graduate and PhD, Fellowships, research assistantships, things like that. That's definitely what you want to be looking for. Um, and then last, don't, don't say thank you. It's a, it's a, please don't, don't type out THX. <laughs> don't write a perfectly beautiful email. Somebody in this building, <coughs> don't write a perfectly beautiful email and type THX. Because if you really had that much gratitude, you would have hit all the keys yeah. to say thank you. So here's an here's example one I wrote in about three minutes. Dear Columbia School of Political Science, my name is Joseph DiBernardo. I'm a graduate student in Algeria. I'm writing to inquire about your master's degree program in political science. I have achieved top marks in my previous graduate study. That's true. And I would like to study at your program because of the potential to introduce the latest political science research back in my home country. That's not true. <laughs> Would it be possible for you to send me additional information? I am particularly interested in information on uh, scholarships you have available for international students. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to your response. Sincerely, my name, my email address, and then it never hurts to throw on that you're in a country that is a little bit unusual, right? Um, so hopefully this can, this can generate some good response, maybe even start a dialogue. There are international admissions recruiters that will email you back and forth, that will start a chain providing you with more information, trying to encourage you, help you to navigate your, the process. That's literally their job. It all depends on the university. They may take this and they may blow you off. You never know. That's it. Um, they may ignore you. So, final thought is to keep your feet moving. Um, is anybody in here familiar with American football? No? A little bit. A little bit. So with the football and the, they wear the pads, it's very it's a very rough sport, right? Yeah. They tackle. Yeah. yeah. So, so I played the, I'm, the latest uh, movie with the concussion with Will Smith. With concussion with Will Smith, that's yeah. right. And the Super Bowl is coming up, the championship. So uh, do you mind helping me demonstrate something? Sure. Stand up. So I played because I'm a big guy. 
I played football in high school. And because I'm a big guy, they didn't let me throw the ball or catch the ball. They made me. Most of football is people, tackle. Ru yeah, tackle. So people running into other people. So he's trying to tackle the guy with the ball, and I'm trying to prevent him from tackling the guy with the ball. And the thing our coach would always tell us is, when you run into something, he's an obstacle. Yeah. I want to. I want to get through him. I want to get out of his way. I want to push him down, defeat him. Yeah. Right. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. So the coach, so when you hit an obstacle like this, when you hit an, another blocker, the thing our coach would always tell us to do is keep your feet moving. Keep your feet moving. Why? Keep your more strength. Because it keeps forward momentum, keeps forward progress. So even if you hit an obstacle, if I stop, I'm not going to keep going. I have to keep my feet moving. I have to keep moving forward to push through that obstacle and hopefully you'll end up on the ground, on your butt, yeah. and then my team will score and we'll win and I'll stand over you <laughs> and flex. All right? Thank you. Yeah, okay. So that's the, that's the most important thing. As you research the schools, as you try to identify opportunities, there's some times where you're going to really struggle. You might not find. It might be frustrating. It might take you 30 minutes. And you might end up researching a school just to find out, ah, the last minute, it's not a good fit. You know, I thought I was reading a scholarship opportunity and the requirements, but then at the very end, you see it's not for international students. You have to keep your feet moving. You have to keep pushing. That's an American sports metaphor for an Algerian audience. I hope that worked. <laughs> That's a little rough. So it is going to require some hard work. Now, one of the most important things is don't try to do everything at once. Work on this gradually. This is going to be a many month step process, right? And don't be overwhelmed by it. Now, what I can do to help is I can help answer specific questions. Um, if you're struggling with something, especially email me if there's a term you don't understand. Um, if a university official writes back to you and they use a process or something that you're not familiar with and you can't find the answer to, um, odds are either I know or I know somebody who can know or we can find out together. What I can't do what I can't do is, um, is uh, I can't help you do it. I can't do it for you, OK? So it is going to take work on your part. So for homework, I'm asking you to research one school on the spreadsheet that I'm going to send you first thing on Sunday morning. Um, fill that out completely and see, get used to that process. And I'd also like you to write a, a form contact letter like this. Because this is important, because it's going to get you thinking about what, what, what's the two sentence, what's the best thing about me? What's the things that makes me the most attractive student? You have a uh, good mark. Good mark in oh, well, that wasn't a question. But yeah, in theory, I did do very well in grad school. Thank you. <laughs> um, I had only um, one non-perfect grade. Yeah. Undeserved. Make sure you change the name of the school at the top when you send it out. If you laugh, you'd be surprised how much it happens. Make sure you change the name, okay? Because if I am Stanford and I get an email that says, Dear Columbia, <laughs> right in the trash. Okay. And the final thought I'll leave you with is be open through this process. Um, because many Algerian students, it's very difficult to understand the American education system. You may, in fact, I virtually guarantee, you will come out of this um, with a different goal in mind than the one you came in. And that's good. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be open to new ideas. Be open to new opportunities. Be open to new experiences. Okay? Because the, the ultimate question that you have to ask is, if I study in the US, if I take this opportunity, even though it might not be, even though I'm going backwards maybe even in a degree program. Where will I be when I come through it? What is my destination? If your destination is good, if your destination is an improvement, then it's worth doing. In many ways, this represents an investment, right? We talked about this last time. Yeah. yeah. It can represent an investment. So if the investment is worth doing, if the investment's worth making, then you should consider it. Okay? Go for it. Do, what, do what's best for you. All right? So next week, we'll talk about um, financing your studies. We'll talk about different scholarship opportunities. And we'll put some tools in your hands that will allow you to research different things. Okay?
We'll also talk a little bit about scholarship applications, because in many ways, applying to scholarships is kind of like applying to universities as well. Okay? Does anybody have any um, specific questions? No, nobody has any questions. Okay. All right. So uh, what will happen is uh, I will email you uh, this afternoon everything from week one, and then I will also email you on Sunday everything from week two except the video. Okay, except the video. The video will come later um, because it's a very big file and it, it takes a little while to upload yeah. onto the internet. Yeah. Okay. Nobody has any questions. Thank you for everybody who came from so far away. Um, the last thing I'll say is I know I talked about expectations. Um, if you are a graduate student, the one thing that you should absolutely consider to applying to is the Fulbright, right? Because there's no reason why not. If you're selected for a Fulbright, there should be no reason why you can't go. Because it not only covers the cost of tuition, it covers the cost of the plane ticket, it covers the cost of your health insurance, your books, and your living expenses, okay? But, uh, but the choice for the university, will, will they choice? Uh, so they'll, they'll work to place you, so if you, if you have a specific, or set of specific university, or set of specific requirements that you're trying to do, um, but in a lot of cases it depends on where, what university will be willing to take you in. Okay? So that is the one limiting factor. Choice is what's most important to you. But um, I would posit that a full scholarship at a major U.S. university is going to be a great thing no matter what. No matter what, yeah. Yeah, no matter what the outcome. Okay? So no matter what, even if um, you lose all your money tomorrow betting on soccer, um, you should at least have one opportunity that you can come out of this with. Okay? So uh, we'll, do, we'll do financing next week, um, and then we'll do a little bit more on researching some of those alternative options. So look at the syllabus and think about, okay, if you know I'm not interested in ESL, I'm not interested in community colleges, then those aren't the, the best fit for me to come to. i just do it online. Um, and then after that, we'll jump into how to prepare your application. Practice TOEFL, writing essays, improving essays, things like that. Okay? Yeah.